We want to go back now to uh, CBS News Chief Medical Correspondent John LaPook in New York. Uh, you know, John, I, I saw that piece uh, earlier, and you still get kind of a catch in your throat uh, when, you, when you're watching that story unfold. It's, it's impossible not to be uh, touched uh, by seeing scenes like that. That's for sure. And, uh, you know, you see what she said at the end about being an invisible. I mean, I think that's one of the things that's so frightening to people. But, you know, earlier we heard from the nurse who was talking, giving information about what, what happened. And, and it rings so true because when I was a third year medical student, I was taken by the elbow to a woman in the hospital. And he said, this is Mrs. McCormick. She's the chief nurse, the head nurse. Always listen to the nurses. They're on the front lines. They're actually taking care of the patients. They know what's happening. And so when the nurses are talking here, boy, should we ever listen to them. Well, we certainly heard them with the bark off. I mean, we've heard a lot of bureaucratic language and, and PR strategies and all that. Uh, but every time I've heard one of these nurses talk about the situation, uh, they put it in language we can understand. Let, let me ask you this. Uh, what are you hearing about the two nurses uh, who were infected? Uh, how are they doing? So, so far, they're being treated at specialized centers, uh, one at um, Emory and one at the NIH, and so far they're, they're stable, doing okay. And I think there's a lesson here. We're seeing a shift. Instead of saying, well, any hospital in the United States can handle this, you know what? Every hospital in the United States should be able to initially make the diagnosis, but then after that, maybe transfer them to specialized centers. Now, right now, there are only four of them. Uh, Dr. Fauci told me a few days ago they're thinking about ramping up and getting a few more of those. And, and uh, uh, just what, as a doctor, what do you say to Americans out there? Uh, step back from this a little bit. Uh, should people feel generally safe, or how should they be feeling right now? You know, on the one hand, you don't want to pat people on the head and say, everything's okay, don't worry about it. On the other hand, you don't want to have panic. So the answer is somewhere in the middle. I think the risk to the general community here is, is quite low. The risk is really here to the ha healthcare workers. Those are the ones who have gotten infected here, aside from Mr. Duncan, who obviously brought the virus with him from West Africa. We're talking about two nurses who took care of him who were very closely uh, in contact with body fluids. But I do understand people's sense of, of anxiety about it. But I think it's important here to, to embrace science, to not have magical thinking, and to uh, be willing to say, you know something? What we thought was true is not true. This is a changing protocol, a changing situation. It's fluid. And so that's why I think it's a good step that the CDC is saying, well, maybe the protocol wasn't exactly right. We're going to change them, make sure that every inch of the body is covered. I think that's, that's an important response. The, the ability in science and in medicine, we have a tradition where if a mistake is made in a hospital, it's called mortality, morbidity and mortality conference, m and And the next week, we all go together, gloves off. What exactly did we do wrong? so that we don't do it again. And I think there was a little hesitancy at the beginning to sort of say exactly what went wrong. It's very crucial that there's transparency. We learn not only what went wrong, but as we're learning from Emory and from uh, Nebraska, what went right, because they're now spreading out, they're distributing protocols. I saw them this morning about exactly how to do the PPE, for example. All right. Well, John LaPook, we, uh, we thank you. Have a great bedside manner. We'll be uh, right back with our uh, panel.